Welcome to the Sales Queen Podcast, where we teach women how to turn their skills into sales and monetize their message so they can finally sell with the clarity, confidence, and certainty that they've always wanted to. No longer does the game of sales need to be an old boys club. It's time for you to sell like a queen. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sales Queen Podcast. I'm here with Cassandra Brunson. She is an absolute rock star, entrepreneur, woman of faith. She's in ministry and the founder of The Calling, which she actually started in high school, which is absolutely incredible. We're both also Miss America sisters. She competed in the Miss Colorado organization, and I am so incredibly honored and excited for our talk today. So, Cassandra, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Oh, thank you so much, Megan. It's an honor to be with you and just admire your role in humanity and to be on this incredible podcast. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you. The first question that I would love to ask you today is we always kind of started out this way. Why don't you tell everybody kind of your origin story of the major points of what got you towards becoming this queen today, this amazing human being who's serving the world in such an amazing capacity? Why don't you kind of tell us your origin story? What a great question. Well, I love that question and just the background and to see God's fingerprints just growing up. You know, when I was little, I come from a divorce family and that has just made me who I am today in a lot of different parts. I have a sister, we're a year apart. And so her and I just kind of grew up being able to be loved by two different parents that loved us just as much as one family would. So we kind of get, we got double the love, which has been such a blessing, but also just going through those dynamics of, um, you know, just where is home and where, where is that settling? And God just had always had such a huge piece of my heart. I was always hungry to get to know him and, I always had a thirst for leadership and not just that I had to be the leader, but just a yearning to want to help people. And it was just through these different dynamics of walking throughout, um, you know, just different activities from sports activities and wanting to be involved in everything possible from cheerleading to track to soccer, and then all the different school activities from Dennett and whatnot, but they allowed me to be able to know that I just had a yearning to help the least of these. And, you know, I had different seasons of being bullied and, you know, I think people just rise up in different times that they can't see your potential. And a lot Mm. of times they're jealous because they, you have what they don't have. And when you're walking through it, you can't see that clearly. And you're like, what's wrong with me? What's going on? But I think that compassion and that empathy just rose within me, especially throughout middle school and into high school and really just seeing that, you know, it really mattered what group of friends I was going to hang around. And, um, Jesus just really spoke to my heart and he was like, Cassandra, you can't keep hanging around these girls or these people. You're going to start becoming like them. And whether Mm. we know it or not, we do start becoming like those around us. And so I had to walk away and I didn't have very hardly any other friends besides my sister and her friends for about two years, but I still was involved in different leadership positions from cheerleading captain to student body president. And it was my senior year in high school that the Lord just truly invaded my whole, my whole heart and just wanted to give him everything. And I was in a class called senior project. You could do anything that you wanted to before you graduated and you got English credit for it. So I was praying and praying and all my friends, you know, they they knew exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to build snowboards or write a full cookbook. And I felt, I was like, what is my niche? What is, what is my unique purpose? And I think we all go through that asking, what is our, what is my unique purpose that I can give to the world? And so I was just praying and kind of felt just lost. And it was in the middle of a passing period the middle of 2000 students. And I think, you know, it's like a human zoo, a public high school in a passing period. People are, you know, getting shoved against lockers. People are throwing papers. And it was in the midst of that, that I just heard God's voice speak to my heart. And he said, Mm. Cassandra, so many of my people are afraid to go after the things I'm calling them to tell them not to be afraid. And it Mm. was from that moment on, Megan, that 
God just stirred in my heart this vision of what would happen if us as a people, as his children, were able to walk fearlessly in the destiny that he's placed in our hearts, knowing that whatever that answer is to what would you do if you knew you could not fail, Mm. and we step into that, the world is able to see Jesus in such a new and vivid way to know that he is the one to bring that abundant life. So ever since then, uh, you know, that has been what I feel like I've been born to do. And that has just walked me through lots of different chapters of life, but being able to have conferences and workshops and seminars to be able to gather people in communities and nations to ask what their dream is and to help activate it. So we've had events at Red Rocks Amphitheater um, to events in Haiti, and we're excited just to continue just to grow all around the world to different nations and developed into different media outlets from a radio program to TV and throughout it threaded throughout has been lots of highs and lows, which happens with entrepreneurship. And, you know, I was diagnosed with Lyme disease. We had felons that stole all the money and, um, you know, just a lot of backlash. And that's what happens when we're pioneers, when we're forging the ground. But it opened up opportunities for Miss Colorado and being a character actress and a professional mermaid. So, you know, God loves the best of stories and we just get to be part of it. Wow. I have a hundred things I want to ask you. I I, I can't wait. Okay. I love it. I love it. So one of the things I really wanted to hone in on today, because I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast are at different like points of that journey of purpose, right? Mm -hmm. For you, what are maybe some things that you would encourage somebody in of, you know, one or two things that you're like, Hey, if you don't know your purpose, this is a great way to start. If you don't know how you're called to make an impact or what your calling is, here's what I would recommend to do. What are some of those things that you found to be helpful for people? You know, I think uh, I love that question. And I think that's where we're on this like treasure map and we feel like we're lost and we don't know where to get started and how to get to that point. Because when we have your purpose, you can make every interaction so meaningful, every single event meaningful. You can connect Mm. that person to this and um, see how God orchestrates it. But when you don't know what it is, it starts with just knowing that your heart already knows what that purpose is. So just rest in that. the reason I say that is that God has a unique purpose for each one of us. So relying on that truth, start with asking your heart that question. What would I do if I knew I could not fail? Mm-hmm. And I think when first off, if there's any selfish motive in that purpose, don't do it. You can't do it because <laughs> God is going to bring all those desires of your heart. And that includes if you have a desire to be wealthy, if you have a desire to be a world changer, a leader, a speaker, all those things. He wants that for us, but he wants it to be in the right way, in the right avenue. Otherwise it's going to destroy us. So first delight yourself in the Lord. And that means just surrendering everything to him, knowing that we're made for him and his glory. So to love God, to love other people. And when you have that alignment, then ask, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? And when that answer rises up, as crazy as it might sound, let it rest and let God then allow it to be confirmed. And so he might do that through by you driving and you seeing a sign that has your purpose or um, especially just in scripture, make sure that it's lined up because the only thing that lasts in this life is the word of God. And he he can help us walk through fires and come out of it better than we ever were before and strengthened. But if it's not a purpose that's lined up in his word to love him and other people, it won't last. So start with Mm. knowing that you want to build it on a strong foundation and the simplicity that it's already in your heart. You don't have to take all these assessments, what you're good at, what you're bad at. Um, It's usually what we're horrible at that he's like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm putting this on you, your name tag, and we have to trust him. So that's Mm. how I would start that out. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. I've never heard half those things before and I've been in this world a long time. So I think that's going to help a lot of people. And oh. that's just so beautiful. We could go home right now and that would be helpful for people. So I love that. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, that's a big part of the calling's heartbeat and that God just wants to make it simple for people to find their God-given purpose. 
And we do make it so complicated of trying to figure out what it is. And really, he lets us, whatever that dream is when we ask him and it's our hearts are in alignment and we ask that question or question similar to it. It's what we're meant to do. And the very next step after that, Megan, is speaking it out loud and mm. um, having the faith to start proclaiming it. That that's what you feel called to. And watch like a magnet, how the right people start coming into place, the right networks. And I think all of us can testify that that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. I have another question about that too. So you're obviously very successful. You've got the followers, you're beautiful, all these different things. What would you say to somebody that maybe is going through a really tough time? They they know their purpose. Maybe they've even been working. And right now it feels like strife. And <laughs> maybe that's a red flag, you know, that God's calling you to something else. But also it might just be like a valley season where they're like, hey, I just feel like I'm working, but it's not mm-hmm. picking up traction. No one's noticing me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. What would you say to those people? And did you ever have a time in your life, you know, you had people steal all the money, like all these different things. Like you started mm-hmm. this in high school. Can you talk yeah. to, to me a little bit about like, What were some of those challenges that you went through? What would your advice be to somebody? And how did you keep going and become the person and the influencer that you are today? Mm, Well, thank you for that. And thank you for the honor. I, you know, I think perseverance is a key characteristic to being a child of God and, and to being an entrepreneur. Yeah. (laughs) Because without a doubt, yes, you're going to be given the green lights, but all of a sudden we had to review remember that we have an enemy that's after us and he's actually after our purpose that we're meant to impact humanity with. And so when we're going, there's going to be so many seasons, it's a roller coaster, the highs and lows. And when you are in a low and even in the very beginning, it could be very lonely, very hard. Um, it's going back to knowing being re-energized that it's a God given purpose that he's with you. And I would say, do not give up. Like you just have to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and integrity counts all the more. So what you're doing in the dark with no one's watching you, that's what matters. And that's what God sees. And that will be able to be brought to the light at the right time. But it's like all those seeds that are sown. And I think Christine Kane does a really great job talking about that. Um, and many other leaders and pastors, but those seeds that are in the ground, it's so dark. Um, but you have to just keep watering it by faith. And, you know, Hebrews eleven six says nothing pleases the Lord, but faith. And so faith is hard. It's a hard journey. <laughs> it's a hard muscle to exercise. But if we can do that every day, and that'll help us in the highs and the lows, because even when we're in a high, it takes a lot of faith to rejoice and know that it's not about us. But it's about yeah. him and in the yeah. valley season you know, link art, make sure that you're surrounded by great community, the right friendships, the right um, anchors that you're already in the tradition of having those habits um, set up. So, yeah. you know, you have to be ready for the storms that could hit yeah. at any. Yeah, and- I totally agree with that. And I think that's so powerful. One thing that I've observed, I don't know if you've observed this, is that Sometimes with Christians specifically, they block their own blessings because of maybe like some religiosity or some legalism that is ingrained in their identity that's telling them that it's less holy to be wealthy or successful or live at like the magnitude of your purpose. How right. how have you navigated encouraging people through that? Have you come against that? Or, or if it's not that, is there anything else that you feel like are major blockades that actually people can remove themselves, but they're putting it upon themselves that are stopping them from their blessing or walking in their purpose? Yes. Well, I, you know, just, um, I think that we rock in the, we rock in the same realm as Jesus did in the Pharisees. And so he was the, he was the Messiah. <laughs> and yes, there was times that he was rejoiced and celebrated but a lot of the time he was ridiculed and so we are we need to be reminded that when we are ridiculed it's okay Uh, he's that they hated him they're gonna hate us at different seasons but I you know when I first entered into my bachelor's degree I'm now getting my doctorate in it but I was I was gonna be a teacher and that was kind of my safe space that I wanted to My mom was a teacher. My Nana was a teacher. I was just going to carry that baton. And 
this just this heart tug on me was inside and God was like, Cassandra, like if you could be a teacher and you'd love it, but you'd always wonder what if, and that what if for mm. me was this dream from high school. And then that I was like, okay, well, if the calling was my job, this whole idea of um, the conferences and helping people after their dreams, I mm. would have to be an entrepreneur and I'd have to go in the realm of business. And so I started learning about business and that, it wasn't a sin to make money. And it was actually such a blessing to be able to give back to the kingdom, to be a leader of leaders and what that could do to shift cultures and humanity. And so yeah. it was a paradigm shift. And I, I think that God keeps on giving these opportunities to be shifted um, of like, oh, what what is possible? Because he wants to keep stretching our imaginations. And so I got my MBA and now I'm getting my doctorate of strategic leadership of uh, just whole, this whole realm of leader of uh, business and entrepreneurship and knowing that we're meant to make an impact and whatever that means of creating great wealth, of being able to give back, to be able to build these kingdom empires. Uh, we're going to have a lot of naysayers, but they just can't see. They can't see what is possible. And, yeah. you know, Matthew 19, 26 just says with God, all things are possible and we're meant to live by childlike faith. And even I was ridiculed recently being at the Grammys and I was supposed to be sitting in the way back. And I, one of the producers brought me to one stage and then Megan at the, um, towards like halfway through, they brought me to the very front. You don't know what's going to happen. I just knew that God was, he had me there as representing the calling and yeah. the most demonic performance was done with Sam Smith. And yeah. I had so many, there was so much backlash from Christians saying, how yeah. dare you be there? But when we're, when we know that we're meant to be light in dark spaces, we just have to be able to know we have that right community. Our hearts are aligned with the yep. truth and proclaiming his word. So he, I think we're in a shifting of what's happening in humanity right now. So, yeah. Yeah, this whole, like, absolutely. what you're doing is just so powerful. Thank you. Yeah. You know, and, and we think about being a light to the world. And I think so often Christians get a, a little bit of a, I don't know, like, a, like whitewash is kind of the word that I'm looking for a fabricated ideal about like, okay, well we say like, be a light in the darkness. But then when someone does, sometimes they're <laughs> Christians are the first people to like turn on somebody. And I'm yeah. like, here you are sitting, you know, on your couch, not living in your purpose. And then you're condemning somebody else that's taking action and yeah. has yeah. the courage to literally go into these dark places. And I always mm -hmm. say like, you know, I have the Holy spirit. It's like, you're not my Holy spirit. I already have one of those, you know, <laughs> but, but that, yeah. but that is tough because when you're going into these places, when you're living in your purpose, you're also mm -hmm. more exposed to all these different things. So for you, I saw in your bio too, which I love is it says that you're able to really like awaken the impossible in people and activate the impossible. How have you had the courage to keep going in your life? And maybe what's your encouragement to other people that maybe they do have some naysayers, maybe they got their first breakthrough and now they're dealing with the fact that they, you know, they're out of their comfort zone. Like how have you kept persevering and um, how would you encourage other people to do that if they're kind of on that journey? Mm-hmm. You know, I, so it all goes back to that beginning. So just make sure we have to make sure that our roots are grounded in the right soil. And if it, there's anything that's trying to, if we have bad plants or like weeds that are starting to come up, like get rid of them, pull them out. Um, that would just be, that's just always like prudence and wisdom because the enemy is going to just, he's going to try to have it all in the blind spot. So just make sure that yeah. there's that gardening and, uh, we are not meant to give up. I think we give up way too easily. <laughs> and that has been, I think, just a pillar in my heart that if it's not, I love that song and I'm forgetting the artist behind it, but if it's not good, it's not over. And mm. to know that God is always in the works, um, just with Romans 8, you know, talking about how he makes everything work out for our good. So having that childlike faith that if it's not, looking good, if it's not feeling good, um, but you have, you can look back and you know that God's fingerprints have made you where you're at. Don't ever give up. So yeah, that's through. so beautiful. So good. Mm -hmm. 
I want to switch gears just a little bit and get a, a, a bit deeper into some of the nitty gritty of the entrepreneurship side of things. Since a lot of people um, who listen to this podcast too are like, man, I wonder why Cassandra has blown up. Like, what is she actually doing that is making her successful? So one of the things that I was curious to ask you, you know, you do radio, TV, all these different things. Some, I think some people would look at you and they're like, oh my gosh, like, how did she, how did she get here? What would you say, are there a thread of a couple things that you've done consistently over time that you feel like open doors for you or major moments where you're like, when I learned this, I feel like this door opened. And why do you think that you've been able to have the success that you've had so far? Well, I think that I'm the most unlikely, really. <laughs> like I, I come from a small town, Colorado, um, in Lakewood, Colorado, and divorced family, just a lot of components that are just, I'm just an ordinary girl. And there was nothing really special about my background. But the thing that the Lord has, I think the blessing behind a lot of these open doors has been saying yes to him. And mm -hmm. even with that paradigm shift in college, my freshman year or my sophomore year, because I was going to be a teacher, that was my safe space. I realized that life is too short to have a what if. And so mm -hmm. I was able to say yes to that. And when I was able to say yes, I started speaking out loud what that dream was. And that has opened up so many doors. So with there being opportunities, um, you know, if there is an event that I saw would match my God-given purpose, my heart and my, the Holy Spirit would just rest on me to say yes. And sometimes I wouldn't have a ticket. And I, sometimes I still don't have a ticket and God will open up those doors because it is really, God loves using people. And so he mm. will uh, be able to bless those conversations, when people see that you have a heart of a cause that's rooted behind what you're doing, yes. it opens up their hearts to say yes to it. And it opens up one door to another door. And especially with social media and the internet, like we can be connected so easily. And I think our worlds are even going to be more meshed more than ever before. But I think that's how if we're able to be rooted in the right soil and say yes and be able to walk by faith to know all right who are the right people that could help me and brainstorm and dream a little bit with with Jesus and then actually go and walk by faith those are the doors and the networks that will blow our mind yeah that is so cool i think you know at the end of the day god is a a simple God. And I, I do think that we overcomplicate it so often. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really beautiful. One, another question that I have for you is you talked about community several times. Um, have in your experience, how have you kind of found your community um, as you've become more of a, I don't know, person that's well known, you know, how have you, um, how do you kind of quantify and qualify those relationships of who is a trustworthy person, you know, sometimes people are carrying church hurt or they're carrying maybe business hurt or mm -hmm. whatever, right? Like how, what is kind of your qualifying process for people that you engage with in your regular community and maybe even in discipling or, you know, mentorship or things like that? What has that process been like for you as an entrepreneur and as a Christian? Mm. What a dynamite question, Megan. And you could just <laughs> tell your, your heart of gold from asking that. You know, I, I think that over the years and especially with success and then also the valley seasons, you can really tell who is in your corner mm. and who, who isn't, who's not meant to be there. And yeah. I would say number one, the qualifier is that they have a heart for the Lord and that they would be able to have, I write about this in my book, but just saying that the best kind of friends are the ones that are going to cheer you on and not let you give up on your God-given purpose. And so when yeah. you are walking in that valley season or even the mountaintop, like it's all about keeping you centered. Like what really matters? Um, are you loving, are you giving God the glory? Are you loving others, your family, your friends? And I think that we get out of alignment so easily with the accolades or, um, with getting so distraught when people frown upon us, you know, and I, I can attest to 
all of those different emotions. And what's helped is just having people to be able to stand by to say, no, Cassandra, I know who you are. I've walked through you through this season. And I think just in our generation too, a lot of people are in lots of different states or even nations. And one of my best friends is in Israel right now. Oh, and yeah, it's so special. And I think we have the opportunity to travel different places, but it's, you know, at first it was really hard to know why God would be moving so many friends out of state or overseas. And I think that it's just, he's broadening the network and the possibilities mm -hmm. of being able to stay in relationship with people, but also their communities. So don't be disheartened if your really good friends move distance wise away. Um, but just to be challenged to stay in touch, even in short text messages or video calls and to travel to one another. I think that's been one of my biggest joys is going to events with friends and, you know, if there's a meeting or a celebration, inviting them to be part of it, or they invite me to be part of uh, those events. But I think, you know, if there's someone that just can't see my heart behind a project or they just want to, I don't know, I think that we just have to be better at blocking off our, the center of our hearts, that Jesus has our heart and then we have our inner circle and Jesus yeah. only had, you know, he had like one and then like three, but for us to know that we don't have to have millions of people in our very innermost corner. And it's great to have lots of followers, friends, but if not, it's okay. As long as we have just even one person be able to yeah. have a friend. And to be, to have friends, you have to be a friend. So if you're lacking in that area, start pouring into those relationships that you can believe in and trust in and see how mm. it will flow back to you. Yeah. I love that. That's so beautiful. And I think, you know, we, we all go through those times, but for some reason, <laughs> I know even in my own life, it's so easy to look at somebody else that's successful and be like, man, there's no way that they've been through what I've been through. There's no way that they felt this feeling of loss or loneliness or, you know, I don't even as like a spirit filled Christian when I had to like really grieve, like the first season that I was experiencing betrayal or church hurt or some like really drastic yes. things that happened in my life. When I did let somebody into my inner circle, that was a part of my family. Like mm -hmm. I remember I, that was like, it ended up being a really beautiful season because I found the Lord in a new way where I was like, Hey, he's truly acquainted with my grief. Like he is acquainted mm -hmm. with my sorrows. And to know that like, I wasn't being sinful. I wasn't being whatever, like, no girl, you just need to like process. Like, and if you don't, it's going to show up again later because you're going to be acting from this hurt or this pain, you know, or whatever. So you've talked a lot about valleys and, um, I'm sure you talk about this in your awesome book too, which people can definitely go and get to all the dreamers. I definitely want people to go and check out all of your stuff, but how did you process through maybe some of those seasons? Um, or like you talked a little bit about like setting boundaries. I'm sure even on social media, you get all these messages and there's all this noise, right? How do you like get quiet with the Lord, process through those tough seasons? And what would your encouragement be to somebody who maybe is going through one of those valleys of how they can make sure not to get stuck there and also make sure that they're not just blazing by it? Like, oh, I'm just in faith and nothing's happening, you know, because that can be people's process too. Right, right. I, you know, I think that there just has to be this, I think all those traditions, those habits that we, we had to build on a strong foundation in that rock. So every morning for me, I just, I have to spend time with Jesus. Otherwise I'm like this Cassandra monster and you don't <laughs> want to see that. <laughs> you know, like, it's just like, it's my flesh coming out and yeah, that's not, who I am is I am, I'm the spirit of Cassandra and that's who Jesus has made me to be. And so to get in that alignment every single day and to take one day at a time, don't be overwhelmed by hmm. 10 years from now or 20 years from now. I think that's been a, a, a sprinkle of some of the uh, open doors that the Lord has given to is just seizing the day, making the most out of every day, even asking wow. what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail today and walking by faith that God is going to give the abundant life when we're walking in the now and the present, and he's going yeah. to fulfill all our other needs as we go. But walking in those um, places of despair and blocking out the negative emotions. I have, 
I have been there. And <laughs> it is, even recently, like with the Grammys and everything, there was a lot of close people that just was they weren't seeing my heart behind it. And yeah, you know, I I tried um, explaining to myself and through a radio program, through messaging, through lots of things. But at the end of the day, I had to learn to let go. And I even had That's to so hard. I it is so hard. So and hard. Especially yeah. Especially for women like us as women and on this podcast, we we want we're meant for that community. We're meant to for peace. Like we wanted to all work out. But if we're not seeing eye to eye and it is tearing us down, then I guess what's helped me is that they can just we can be outside each other's bubbles. Like we can still yeah. love each other from afar. But yeah. Yeah, it is. It is very hard. And social media brings a whole nother element to it. Sometimes I choose, you know, most of the time, like on different social media platforms that the comments don't show, you know, that I just yeah. like, there's just certain things that I think we have discernment about in different seasons. And maybe that will change in the future. But just allowing there to if it's a distraction, then just shut it off. It's not worth yep. your attention if it's going to, if it's not fueling your fire that the Lord is steering you towards, then just turn it off. Yeah. I just want to speak to this, Cassandra. I think that you have a really special anointing for making things simple. And I think that that's something that people really need in this season because there's so much noise. So A, I just like prophesy that over you, but like, seriously, I think that you have a very special anointing for that. Like you've, you've even just given me some nuggets that I immediately want to go tell somebody else. And I think, I think that we need that from teachers because sometimes problems seem so big when we're in the middle of it, or, you know, if you don't know your purpose, right? Like I I think about that every day of when I didn't know my purpose, it's kind of like not knowing where you're going to go when you die. It literally is like this lack of a compass that is anxiety, like 24 seven. And so I just like, bless you seriously, because I know what you're doing every single day. And I can only imagine the emails that you get and the responses from your books and stuff, because we're solving this mat, like literally arguably the most important question other than Mm -hmm. salvation, you know? So Mm -hmm. just, yeah, I really think that you have an anointing to make things simple. It's awesome. Thank you. Gave me goosebumps. I, I think that Jesus does like, it is the simplicity that changes our whole lives and you know everyone that's listening that's been part of your world changing community Megan just know that God has a unique purpose just for you and he wants that to be so creative so you know he wants it to be innovative and for such a time as this so I think a lot of times we want it to fit in certain boxes and like we do have to have we have to have a podcast We in this season. We have to have this certain type of website or we have to have this certain um, group of board of advisors or whatever, but God wants it to be so organic and he's going to lead those pieces together. Um, yeah. We get stuck. I think when we think it has to look a certain way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, in the last couple minutes, what I want to talk about, I want to make sure that we hit on is you have some amazing resources for people. You have your book, you have activation kits, you do seminars, you speak all over the place. You have a radio program. Can you tell us just a little bit more in depth what people could expect from those things, where they can find those things? Um, Because I know that you have some really practical tools that can help people. And I I love events. I think it's so powerful when you you immerse yourself. It's like a self-care weekend. It's a spiritual Mm. care weekend where you just like go invest in it. Like your husband can take care of the kids. You're worth it. It's 48 hours, bring your girlfriends, you know? So what are some ways that people can connect with you and, um, tell us a little bit more just about like your products and services and things like that. Yes. Well, thank you for bringing them up. And a lot of them are free. Like our activation sheet is at the calling on profit.org. And you can just go on there and start asking your, asking your heart. Don't ask anyone else's heart, their opinion about you ask yourself those heartfelt questions and you'll be led to put those um, actions onto a timeline. And then you'll have that part of the community that we were talking about, someone to hold you accountable for living it out in the next three months. So that's a great first step. um, I would always challenge people to go towards. And if you would like to hear more of 
the story behind the calling, how it's happened, how it can be applicable to your life. The book is a great resource. It has a seven day boot camp at the end of it, where you can take seven days to purposely fulfill what God's leading you to in this season. And I, mm. we're sensing revival that's going on, that's going on in um, all the world. And then activation kits that can be for just yourself, for your family member, for your community, your small group, but just also going through those action steps. If you feel like you need a little bit more coaching of walking through it together and having that accountability, it comes with a book. But all all in all, these um, resources and then these events are all tied to activating your calling, knowing that you don't have to search for it somewhere else, but it's within you that God um, has stamped it in your heart. And if you're brave enough, courageous enough, and that you are those things, you can see it inside and uh, walk it out this very day. And just like you were saying, the salvation question, you know, am I going to, am I going to go to heaven today? If, if I were to die, but this is another one of, am I going to know what my God given purpose is today? And that can, that'll allow your spirit to come alive in such a unique way where people will know that you are living with the, the living God, the great I am. So would love to have people to be part of that. We have different um, events that we're part of with uh, different organizations. So you can figure that out uh, at our events page on the callingonprofit.org, as well as we have an upcoming gala to a ball that will be coming up this year and a global conference that will be happening in Haiti that will spur into nations all around the world. So wow. I'd love to invite people to be part of all of those events. And just like you were saying, Megan, it's so neat to see how, and it's not just an event, but it's like a movement and a shift in our hearts to be able to be empowered to and called into who we really are. Yeah. Amen. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, everybody. I know you're giving Cassandra a round of applause from your seat. Maybe you're brushing your teeth. Maybe you're in the car. <laughs> Go follow her. And thank you so much. We'll see you guys next week on the podcast.